What is up guys? It is that time of year where the bugs get nasty. But before we go a little bit farther, I'm gonna give everybody a little bit of time to get on here and that way we can get straight to business. But the topic for today will be uh, what's the best insect repellent? And me, as a bay angler, I'm in the sticks, I'm in the stones, <laughs> I'm climbing through trees, whatever it is to get to that big bass, that's where I'm gonna be. So, I'm just trying to figure out, guys, what's the best insect repellent. And this is not just for bank fishermen, uh, it's for guys on boats. Whatever you're out there doing, it's good to be protected because this year out here, it should be pretty crazy when it comes to mosquitoes, ticks, and whatnot. So I'm trying to stay prepared. Last year, I got bit pretty bad by ticks. I'm not trying to have that same thing happen again. So I plan to be ready to go. So let's uh, start to get into things. And if you guys could, just give me a thumbs up if you're there. That way we can move forward with everything. All right. So as we go along, just give me a, a heads up. Um, if you guys have anything that you use in particular that uh, you think is great, that works for ticks, mosquitoes, whatever, just let me know. Um, everybody's opinion and information will be greatly needed when it comes to this subject. So this is a new one I'm going to be trying out. It's by a brand name Sawyer. Uh, this one's pretty unique. So you don't actually apply it uh, while you're getting ready to fish. You actually apply it beforehand. So you spray your clothes down. It's actually supposed to help against ticks, triggers, and pretty much anything out there that's going to particularly get on you. So this is Sawyer. If any of you guys actually used this particular one before, I think it, I brought it for around like 15 bucks. Oh, what's up, Jared? I think it was around 15 bucks from Academy Sports. This is supposed to be one of the better ones, but if you guys know of any better ones, just give me a holler and let me know. Let's see. All right, cool. Let me read Jared's comment from one guy to another. Cutters natural is straight ball and it sprays on dry. That's pretty That's pretty good, man, because a lot of the book spray I use, man, when you spray them on, you got big old blotches like all over your shirt, your pants. Uh, it just doesn't dry pretty quickly. And sometimes I'm potentially worried about it getting all over my bait and everything, too. What's going on? Show me bank fishing, man. Uh, yeah, we're going to get that ASAP. Man, I'm just trying to find something, guys. Like I say, I'm out there in the sticks, man, and just kind of give you guys a reference point. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on my arm, but I've already been bit three times by ticks already this year. When I went down to Jacksonville, Florida, not Jacksonville, when I went down to fish with my homeboy uh, in, what was that, Gainesville, I got bit by ticks, and that was in March. So we haven't even got down to the crazy part of the year down here when everything actually gets active. So I'm trying to stay prepared. I got bit four or five times before, man, uh, last year. Zachary, what's up, man? Love the night fishing lately. I've been trying, man, the night fishing. This year, I'm going to try to fish it a little bit more, man, because I know once it gets hot, those uh, bass are going to start biting at nighttime. And uh, for what I hear, the top water is insane. I got my rat, so I'm going to be throwing that a good bit. And I actually think I've been able to figure out how to film at nighttime. And I think you guys actually enjoy those videos. What I plan on doing is uh, recording. And then when the fish bites, I actually turn it on my camera. And whenever I get the fish in, I can uh, use some lighting to show you guys like how big the particular fish was and uh, kind of break down what happened in that scenario. So Zach, uh, black and blue all night bait. Now, is there any type of baits that you're using at nighttime? And what do you feel works out best for you? Uh, Jared says, gotta save up for those MS Slammers for sure. Most definitely, man. At nighttime, I'll probably be throwing uh, that rat I brought, which is pretty massive. I need to get a couple more Whopper Ploppers. Uh, I think those would be great at nighttime. And I hear some old heads say that, like the jitterbug in like black and white. So um, I hear that top water bait is insane at nighttime. So that should be pretty legit leading into that, man. Because down here in the south, it gets super hot, man. You're talking 100 degrees on the day. So all you got is early morning, and then you have late at night. Or uh, right before night is when fishing actually gets really active. Let's see. Uh, Zachary says, as far as night fishing, Cinco Weightless or any jig. I also try Black Spinner. Works for me on the rocks. Yeah, that does, from what I hear, that Black Spinner is pretty legit, man. Fernando, what's happening, man? Good to have you in here, man. Uh, Jared says, uh, the Jack of Pompadour. The Pompadour is bad from what I hear, man. I never tried one. Those things look pretty crazy, man. 
Let's see. Let me get some of these questions. All right. Um, show me bank fishing. Never fish for bass at night. I must be missing something. Nah, it's pretty legit, bro, because a lot of times they turn nocturnal at nighttime. And actually, some of your bigger bass don't bite until nighttime. Another random thing is also, too, that um, when you're fishing a high-pressured area, sometimes those bass won't bite until nighttime because they're getting pressured all day. So, man, you should definitely try it. Now, when you first try it, it can be kind of sketchy. I'm not going to lie to you, especially if you're fishing from around the bank because you really can't see around your feet, man. But when that big bass hit, though, man, you ain't going to be worried about those snakes. Well, you might, <laughs> but I'm, I'm trying to get it, man. But at nighttime, you have the opportunity to catch some truly massive fish, man. So give it a shot one day, man. Let me know how it works out. Self Outdoors, what's up, bro? It's good to hear from you, man. Thanks for checking in on us. All right, we got uh, Bass in the Grass. I have a recommendation, but I'm pretty sure you guys don't have sell outdoor stores down, down here. We don't, man. Um, but hey, fill me in, man, because it's something I may be able to buy online if they offer um some online products. So yeah. Give me a shout, man. Let me know exactly what you got going on, man. Uh, South Outdoors. When I use the night fish, I use onion juice. Now, what's the deal with that, man? That is something new I had never heard before, man. Break down to me, man. Uh, chop an onion and extract the juice. What? <laughs> That's insane. But, you know, fish do trigger in, I believe, on bite. I mean, sorry, on sense and whatnot. So, I'm going to have to try that, man. All right. Uh, Dear Adams. It all amounts, would you go to the hospital for 14 pounder? In which case I would. Bro, I think I would go to the hospital for 14 pounder. It is what it is, bro. And if you get me one more pound, then I would definitely go down as one of the biggest fish caught ever in Georgia at 15 pounds. I'll take that snake back for 15 pounds, bro. <laughs> I sap outdoors. Old survival method. All right, man. Zachary says, yes, be careful at night, please. And yes, especially on high pressure lakes. Yeah. At nighttime, man, those big ones come out, man. All right. Let's see, man. Um, we got one more in here. Oh, what's up, man? Uh, classic off spray. Hey, it's hard to be off spray. I've been using that stuff for years, man. And it ain't crazy expensive. So that's a big thing. And for you guys that just tuned in, uh, the big question was like, what's the best repellent to use, man? Because me as a bank fisherman, I'm getting lit up, man, sometimes. And I'm trying to get a head start on it before next year. Show me bank fishing. Yes, I would go with bass in my hand. Man, absolutely, man. Ain't nothing better than a big bass in your hands, man. All right. I got one more question for you guys, too, as I read this. All right. But hang on. I'll go look at mine. I found one at the car park store. Okay. Yeah, man. I'll be here for a second, man. I'm just here chopping it up with you guys. Now, the big question is, I know a lot of guys go both ways on this is, do you feel like repellent stops bass from biting? Or any particular fish. Let me know. It's been a big rumor forever. Um, I don't know if I see any scientific data on it quite yet, but uh, just let me know. Zachary, I use 100 proof, just rub it on. It's nasty feeling. <laughs> man, some, sometimes anything that keeps them, th them bugs, those ticks off you, man, I wear like Nike compression pants, man, like skin tight. I put socks on top of them, and then I put my regular fishing pants on top of it, man. I feel like sometimes I'm going to war for these bass, man. But um, I go on some pretty nasty places, man. Uh, yes, I always use ESA. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a classic, man. It works really well. Wash hands or something. Yeah, wash hands. Um, One thing that I do, guys, I use a lot of scents on my baits. Um, Garlic is one of those scents. It's actually supposed to... um deodorize or cover up scents so if i'm ever like putting uh bug spray on and i happen to get some on my hands you know I, I stick my hands in the water in the lake rinse it off and then i use some garlic bird on it all right let's see what jared's got to say not a dog because a couple let me see before that goes off a couple of my tents have bait with me covered in cut or natural and it was probably one of my swimming jigs for use <laughs> for sure but jared said he got big baits with bug spray on too man so that's good to hear man I always worried about that, man. My boy sprays himself down, then rubs some fish smelling crap on his hands, but he still don't catch crap. <laughs> now that could be the bug spray, or it could be that he couldn't catch fish. So I don't know, man. But I'm on the borderline. You know, I think it may affect it, but me getting bit by 50 mosquitoes, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this shot and just put it on anyway, and probably use some like garlic scent 
on top of my base to cover that scent, man. So, it's worth it sometimes, man, not to get bit a thousand times, man, you know. So, uh, so in you guys' area, what are you throwing right now? And, and what's some of your plans for this summer to get to some of these big bass, man? What's going on, Tahoe? Yak Fisherman? All right, man, let's see what you got to say. I always sunscreen a buck spray after I rig. Try not to touch rigging. D is the best. I heard good things about D too, man. I haven't tried D yet, um, but I do agree with you, man, about rigging up afterwards. That does make more sense. Let me make sure I read it correctly about how you rig up, man. Always just gonna always sunscreen a buck spray after I rig. Yeah, man, get it rigged up. That way you have minimum amount of time to actually touching your bait and getting everything messed up. So I agree with you, man, on that. Let's see. What's going on, Dennis Forrester? Uh, Sawyer and, let me see, the, it's awesome. Spray your clothes, socks, shoes, let it dry. It works for a week. That's what the package said. It said it works for up to six weeks. So I'm gonna definitely try it out and I'll get back to you guys and let you know like if it was the real deal or not. I think it's gonna be. I used some of the Sawyer products before. I just haven't used this hardcore stuff yet. So I wanted to get the advice from you guys because I'm pretty sure y'all can help me out and put me in the right direction. All right, Zachary. All about if you feel comfortable. Comfortable. Absolutely, man. If you're not confident in what you're doing, you're setting yourself up for a loss, man. I agree with you 100%, man. All right, just kind of reading through some of these uh, questions, guys. Uh, Jared said, uh, use the Bass Dynasty bluegill slime. I think it really smells like a bluegill. Yeah, man, like, so if you do happen to get bug spray and stuff on your hands, on your base, you know, give them a good rinse off, man, and then apply some type of scent just to help cover that up so you'll be catching fish. The goal is to catch fish, you know. That is what it is. So, yeah. So, yeah, guys, like, um, I definitely believe it's worth that, you know, using bug spray and stuff not to get bit, man, uh, or get bit up by ticks because it's not a joke out here, man. All right. Let's see. So hopefully I can bring some pretty cool trips pretty soon um, for you guys to see. Um, bass fishing has been pretty good as far as bed fishing. Now it's that point in time where, um, <clears throat> sorry, I was reading a question. Now it's pretty much the point in time where they have uh, fry garters. Here we're pretty much at the tail end of the spawn. So it's pretty much done. Uh, and you have the bluegills on bed. So I've been having some fun messing around with bluegills, but I know soon those bass have begun, are beginning to prey on those bluegills as they go on bed. So I have a really cool swim bait coming in called uh, the donut that I can't wait to try. It's a glad bait. Um, so I'm gonna be targeting some of those bigger bass and hopefully pretty soon uh, I do some trout fishing and meet up with another YouTuber and I'll uh, make a pretty cool collab video. Um, and if you guys haven't had a chance, uh, just let me know how you guys like the video with Hook'em in the Mouth, man. That was my first uh, big collab so far. Let me read some of these questions, guys, and get all caught up. Stuff outdoors, and that's what eat you up before night comes. <laughs> that's true, man. That'll carry you away, man, if you don't watch out. Uh, Tahoe Yak Fisherman, uh, maybe use some natural... Let me see. Sorry, guys. The questions are going in and out. Uh, gloves when you apply bug juice. That's true, man. Um, anything to help. All right. Show me bank fishermen. Man, I think I'll be throwing more glad baits this year. Man, you know, I agree with you, man. Because for me, like, I like catching fish, but I would much rather catch one six, seven, eight pounder than probably, you know, 10 two pounders in a day. So I believe sometimes, for me personally, it's worth going out that big bite, man, versus getting all those smaller fish. Um, everybody's a little bit different. You know, some people say a fish is a fish, but I'm pretty much targeting those big fish. Um, and that's what I truly enjoy. Um, don't get me wrong. Like, I'd rather not go get skunked like five trips in a row trying to get one big fish. But it does happen sometimes when you're using these big baits. But I'm going to try to make it work, guys, and bring you guys along as I actually learn about them. All right. They show me bank fishing. I need a record this year. Absolutely, man. I'm trying to get one too. You ain't the only one. <laughs> but here, man, unfortunately in Georgia, man, you actually have to catch pretty much a 14 and a half pound bass to get on that record list of the top 50 in Georgia. And that is no joke. And if you hit 14 and a half pounds, you're at the bottom of the list. So at any point in time, you can have anybody take you off. I mean, honestly, probably that 16 in that 15 pound range, I get you on that list for a while, man. But I'm gonna be going for it, man. Even if it take me about 20 years, I'm gonna try to make it happen, man. 
Uh, Jerry Adams, as far as plans go, I'm going to hit up some mountain trophy lakes and just do some crazy stuff with swim baits. Absolutely, man. I actually may be going pretty soon to one of these uh, trout fed lakes in Georgia. So you guys will probably see the result of that video pretty soon. I'm going to be chunking those big hoods um, and primarily probably just switching fishing with swim baits on that particular video. But I still have some pretty cool stuff to bring to you guys. Um... Like I said, I'm probably going to go after some smallmouth pretty soon, within the next month or so. And some trout. Uh, let's see. Try to do some salt water and hook up with my buddy, hook him in the mouth again. And uh, this plan, a couple other big bass trips, man. Uh, I don't know how many guys on here are from Georgia right now, but pretty soon, man, I'm going to go to that Panic Lake uh, down in Blackshire, which is a uh, public fishing lake. But the average size bass there, from what I hear, is around 7 pounds. And I think that'd be a great video to just use swim baits only and target a trophy bass. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's bass way over 10 pounds in there. The average bass is 7 pounds. From what I hear, it's an extremely hard place to fish. The fish have pretty much seen everything. So I'm going there with the heavy gear, uh, big swim baits. So, and don't get it twisted, guys. I won't be only just using swim baits from here on out. I'm going to mix it up. Because, uh, you know, throughout different times of year, different techniques work. So, but I think that'll make for a great video. That's about a four-hour trip for me. So, I'll probably drive down there early one morning and drive back late one afternoon. Uh, and hopefully, I can bring you guys a big bass. Like, the goal still is 10 pounds for this year. I'm not going to give up yet. But I do plan on mixing it up. Uh, for all you guys that love catfish out there, I actually brought um, a catfish setup, so I plan on going out to some big catfish this year. That should be pretty fun. And this year, also more river fishing. Got to broaden the horizons. Hold on, one second. Give me one second, guys. <laughs> back in full effect <laughs> it's like commercial let's see uh different bait for different dates absolutely man uh different times you require different baits all right let me see what else we got going on jared said i gotta show you how to frog the way this summer man yeah man frog fishing is definitely on the list man um definitely one thing i want to work on man is top water that's been one of the big aims for me um because primarily, I'm a, a bottom fisherman. I fish at mid-level a whole lot. But I definitely plan on fishing top water baits a whole lot more. So, and then this, that, that big blow up, man. Like, how can you beat that? You know, that's one of the best things about fishing. All right, let's see what we got going on, guys. <clears throat> let's see, Zachary. Let's see, I like the black and blue booyah or the KBD. And cut the legs walks best for me. All right, man. Thanks for the heads up. I definitely try it out, man. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm always trying to learn different techniques. Because one thing is when you're out fishing with somebody, sometimes if you don't know a lot of different techniques, you have to rely on just what you know. And at some points in time, like that's not what the fish want. So being versatile is definitely the key, man. And that's something I definitely plan on working on so I can bring you guys some great content. Um, and also, if, if it's anything else you guys want to see, uh, just let me know. Um, try to be patient with me. I do work a good bit, but I will try to incorporate it into my videos. All right, let's see. Jerry Adams, my favorite is a River 2C Bully WA2 and the Jackal ILB. See, that's two baits that I've never heard of, so I definitely check those out and kind of see what's going on with those. You know, it's all about missing the arsenal up. And honestly, <laughs> it's, it's, it's about trying not to go broke. Because uh, swim baits are definitely expensive, man. And this fishing game is one expensive habit, man. Uh, it gets more and more expensive as I learn about more and more skills and techniques. But that's what it's all about. So whatever it requires, I'm definitely down for it. If you guys have any more questions or anything you want to ask me about, um, whether it's editing or whether it's about uh, fishing, just shoot at me, man. Um, I'll definitely be glad to answer them. Um, I'm an open book. Let's see. All right. 
cool, cool. Let's try to make sure I didn't miss anybody uh, comments so far. Let's see. Make sure we all caught up on everything. All right. Cool, cool, cool. I think we got everything. So um, I don't know how many of you guys uh, fish from the bank. Uh, have you guys have any luck with uh, scurbill crankbaits? That is one thing that I cannot get to work as far as a bank fisherman. Um, when I'm on a boat, I feel confident in it. But uh, maybe it's just a mental block for me. But I just have bad luck um, when it comes to crankbaits. Now, for me as a bank fisherman, a lot of times I feel like the little crankbait is my jam. And I, I do a little bit better with that. Um, if you guys have any suggestions or advice from that, just fire away. You know, give me a heads up. So, and also guys, if you, you know, you're new to this uh, live stream right now, the, one of the biggest questions up front was, um, what's the best insect repellent? Uh, because as a bank fisherman and uh, somebody who stays in the woods, who I got bit numerous times, uh, I think it would be useful for everybody just to have, you know, a better idea on the best way to protect themselves. So, oh, let me show you guys one frog. I know you guys have probably all seen it. Uh, this is one thing I'm going to be using a lot this year too. So... This is the trickler all. Um, my buddy actually has one. I actually watched him fish it. Uh, it's pretty similar to Whopper Plopper, man. Um, I think it's going to do work. And I do like that it's pretty snagless for the most part. I got the camo color. So I think that one's going to be a pretty solid one. So I think this one should be a good one. Um, and one good thing about it, I like about this particular frog is that you actually can fish it pretty fast and cover a whole lot, a whole lot of ground. Which is key, man. Because... Um, on a boat or as a bank fisherman, when you're trying to cover ground, um, it's huge. All right, let me get into these questions, guys. All right. Let's see, uh, a couple from Jared. Also, you need to look into spy baiting. Fishing is kill, it kills it. Spy baiting, I will, man. I will definitely look into it, man, and I'll see what's going on with that. Um, like I said, I'm always learning, man. Also, Jared said the best square bill is the Bill Lewis Echo 1.75. So, I'll be looking to both of those. I'll definitely write it down after I get through this live stream. So, Zachary had a question. He said, you've been liking those frugal jigs. Man, the frugal jigs was pretty solid, man. Um, I haven't brought any more of them since that last video. Uh, I did like them, man. Uh, for the price point, they were pretty solid. And I like the ability to customize your own jig. That was a really big one. Now, if you go back way back in the Arsenal videos, I brought some jigs from, uh, what was it, Double D's, I think, Custom Jigs. Now, he had like a mop jig that I loved. Uh, I haven't seen any more jigs like that, but man, the thing was insane. You throw it out, it was sank, and it would bloom like an onion. Now, the mop jig is a little bit bigger profile of a jig, um, and it has like those live hair, so it floats. And with a trailer, it's amazing. But the frugal jigs are pretty cool, man. I, I did like them. Uh, the one I liked the most was probably that fire attire color with that yellow and red on the bottom, which for me, most of the, the panfish have that orange uh, bottom underneath them. So I thought it pretty much directly mimicked uh, the bait fish. So uh, that bait did pretty well, and most of the water I fished the stain, so I think it actually helped the bass be able to locate them in that dirty water. Um, and the swim jigs... I probably prefer a little bit more over the conventional jig. Um, but both get bit, and usually uh, with both, you get a quality sized fish. So that's one thing I gotta get on the ball with this year. I haven't caught too many fish on a jig. So thanks for reminding me, man. I gotta get back in the game. <laughs> Let's see. How often do all the real, and do you send them in ever to be clean and taken apart? Honestly, man, I've been ripping and running. I need to do it a little bit better. Uh, but truthfully, I think I'm getting ready to send a couple of mine out because uh, my reels take a beating, man. It's it's a couple of those reels have been dumping water, man. I had reels falling water when I was fishing. I've been, you know, I'm a short angler. Sometimes I throw them down and they get mud on them. So I don't treat my reels probably the best. And, you know, right now, this year, I have invested in some better equipment. So I really need to do a better job of taking care of it. Now, I have cleaned a couple of spinning reels and one bait caster. But I don't clean them the way I should, um, just from ripping and running. But I think I'm actually going to get ready to send some out, man. Uh, and if you do, man, is there anybody that you work with as far as cleaning them? Or do you personally do it yourself? All 
right, guys. Making sure I didn't miss anybody's uh, comments. All right, cool, cool. Let's see. How do you guys feel about updating the gears in your in your uh, in your actual uh, reels? I've been looking at some of the videos about the speed gears and stuff like that, man, that you actually can put in your, your reels. I have a couple old ones that I'm thinking about updating. I don't know if it's pretty much worth it to, you know, update it and upgrade, or is it, you know, just worth me, like, buying a new reel. Um, fortunately, now I have a pretty decent lineup uh, where I can switch things in and out. But um, just another option and also just something else to think about. So... So yeah, guys, hopefully this year um, I can bring you guys some pretty cool content like uh, trout fishing. It's definitely on the bucket list. I love river fishing. Um, hopefully big catfish. That'll be pretty interesting. Uh, cause don't take it for granted that I, I love bass fishing. But sometimes it's good to mix it up. And then sometimes with bass fishing, it tends to get a little bit slower in summer. And it actually uh, brings some new content. So you'll probably get still get bass fishing consistently. But it'll be broken up in between maybe carp fishing or cat fishing or trout fishing. Um, I haven't even got out of the crappy this year, which is crazy. Uh, crappy fish can be pretty good. And when you honestly get on, you get on them. Um, and I still haven't got any stripers. So I got to work on that. Because uh, I think the striper run is just about over in Georgia. So I might even make that trip also. All right, Zachary. I was going to see if you had anyone to recommend for cleaning it more in depth but I do a little cleaning myself sorry but I do all the little cleaning myself pretty usual um I think one guy on Instagram called real integrity that's the guy that I'm gonna actually be using potentially uh, he does a lot of cleanings and he does the bokeh gears I believe I use the, the speed spool gears but I look more into them man and if you want to just give me a holler uh, on YouTube or Either on Instagram or Atypical Outdoors, and I can send the, send you the link uh, to his Instagram uh, profile. So that's going to be some of the people that I'll probably use to clean mine. Let's see. Uh, this is from uh, Jared Adams. This summer, I have some crazy cool ideas for us this summer. Man, absolutely lit videos. Super so. <laughs> Most definitely, Jared. We're going to get into some pretty cool stuff, man. Uh, it should be some good times and hopefully some big bass, you know. So that's the goal, man. Big Bass Dreams, as Oliver would say, man. <clears throat> All right, guys. Well, I'm just going to wrap things up, man. I just wanted to hop on here and, and touch bases with y'all. Uh, thanks for all the info regarding uh, the impel the road. Sorry. <laughs> regarding all the inset repellents. And uh, thanks for tuning in, man. You guys have been uh, helpful. And as always, man, giving me some good input. And it's always a pleasure talking back with y'all. So, I'm going to sign out pretty soon, guys, and we'll catch you guys on the next video. Y'all have a great night.